Greetings, everyone. This is Jamal C. Boyd Sr. bringing you this next version of The Journey. And I wanted to share part of a conversation that I had with a very good longtime friend of mine regarding the importance of your name um, as it relates to your marriage and your relationship with your spouse. Um, again, this is my perspective, my opinion based off of my Christian faith and belief. Um, but I think that there's a significant um comparison to your changing your last name um, to reflect the relationship that you're in. And it is a um, subliminal but a very overt way of identifying that um, you are no longer who you were um, once you decide to marry the person that you are marrying. Um, similar to salvation. When we identify with Christ and say that he is our savior and we are believers in Christ, we no longer are who we were. You may still be Jamal Boyd or whoever you are, but you are a Christian. And through that Christian identification, through your salvation relationship with Christ, you are becoming more like him. You are reflecting him in your daily walk and you are becoming one with him in how you function, how you interact with others and how you represent and reflect that relationship with him. So it is with your marriage. You are no longer who you were before you married your mate. You don't identify as yourself because the Bible says that the two shall become one, even though shall is a process, but you are becoming one with your mate. So the dropping of your last name as a female um, helps you to identify with the male that God has placed in your life as your covering. And that's the same way in salvation. God has placed Jesus as our covering in that covenant relationship with him through salvation. So we lose our identity as spouses of one another because we are saying we identify with this marriage as the most important thing in our lives. And it is dropping of that old nature in our salvation experience with Christ and not wanting to identify with that any longer because we want to reflect him and we want to be more like him. And we want him to cover us with his name and be known and associated and affiliated with Christ through salvation. So we should also look to reflect that in our marital relationships with our spouses, dropping that old nature, not wanting to be an individual, but wanting to reflect our marriage and our commitment and our union as that one or having that oneness as we reflect the relationship that we say that we have entered into as a covenant with our mate. I hope that this um, perspective um, generates or sparks some conversation or um, some interest or some relevant revelation um, because I truly feel that um, there's validity in what I what I think and um, you know that's how I try to govern myself in my marriage even though you know I wasn't always where I am today in that thought process but it makes more sense now as I have matured in my relationship and in, in my communication and in our relationship with my spouse. So I think that it's very valuable to have that perspective because if your marriage mirrors your salvation experience, then you learn how to love the person that you're with the way that Christ loves you. And it allows you to exercise and to implement the level of forgiveness and grace and those Christ-like characteristics that he has. If I'm saying I want to be more like him, I am also reflecting that in my relationship with my mate or my spouse. Um, and and it, I think it kind of transitions even further beyond that um, because it also impacts the other types of relationships that you have when you govern yourself in that way. So there is significance in the process of changing your last name. I know that um, some ladies out there may not want to hear that, but again, I think if you are looking at it from a spiritual lens and not a human or a social 
or a societal lens, um, then, you know, this may resonate with you and change or impact the way that you look at this in the future. Those who are unmarried, I really encourage you to think about that as you go into developing or, or courting or preparing for a marital relationship, because this is no joke. This is not anything that you want to play around with. And um, I'm, I'm thankful that um, I was able to um, overcome a lot of the things that being immature mentally and spiritually uh, in the early parts of my marriage that could have led to the termination of my marriage. But I thank God that he gave us grace to learn and mature and to grow so that then we could be where we are today and um, provide the content for this video clip that I'm giving you today as we go along living our journey. So I hope this is a blessing. I hope that this perspective may help you think about things a little bit differently. It is very deep because, um, you know, a lot of this plays into, um, you know, how we also sometimes just want to hold on to our old ways and hold on to our old name. Um, and that's the, again, it's a comparison to our salvation experience. We as, as a sinful individual with sinful nature want to hold on to that. We all sin and fall short of, of the glory of God. Um, and even as a Christian, we struggle with that. But that's why the Bible says the two shall become one because that shall is a process where we have to always be working on um, getting rid of that old nature and not wanting to hold on to those old sinful ways. And we really want to reflect the relationship that we have with those who, the, with the one, not those, but with the one who we are married to, and that's Christ. And we should do the same in our marriage. You know, we should really want to let go of that old nature, those old ways, and really reflect the marriage in a very positive way um, as God has ordained it to be and as we have committed to. Love y'all. Hopefully this is a blessing. Click like, share, help somebody else, and um, follow us on all of the social media outlets. Hashtag the journey. Talk to y'all.